All right, welcome to Stack Hunters. Thanks everybody for joining, and uh, we're we're excited about tonight's show because number one, we get to draft, and you know, like any time you get to draft, that's that, that that's automatically one of my favorite shows. And secondly, we have uh, Liam Murphy, who I I understand has maybe done okay in in best ball before. Um, I'll I'll let him kind of introduce himself as to uh, you know what what all he's done and uh, you know where where he's at, where you could find him, all that good stuff. But uh, we're we're excited about having Liam along for the ride here. So Liam, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, you know let let the Stack Hunters crowd know who you are if they don't already. Thanks for having me on. Um... Yeah, I was fortunate to take down a couple best ball contests, and I have my own YouTube channel where you can just look up my name and find me. And excited to uh, excited to do this draft. What what slot are you guys in tonight? We are sitting in the uh, the number four slot, and um, looks like what you're in the number eight. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and I'm going to. Share the draft board, or oh, I got it. Like Bradley's already got it, so cool, cool. So yeah, we're gonna basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna draft our way through this draft, and you know as we go along, uh, we definitely want to talk about rookies and you know what we've learned from the scouting combine and before. I mean, you know, there's a lot left to go. You know, the NFL draft tells us more about rookies than anything else. But, uh, you know, just kind of some general thoughts and impressions. I mean, you know, we, Liam and Bradley and I were talking pre-show, and we're all kind of on that same bandwidth of, you know, we're not trying to, you know, come up with hard and fast rookie ranks and, you know, pound the table for this guy or that guy. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still taking in information, letting the NFL tell us what they think about the rookies. But, um, you know, it's... It, it, it's a fun time right after the combine because of the fact that, uh, you know, this does kind of change the best ball ADP. You know, we're, we're seeing things move right now. Um, I'm in a, a good number of best ball drafts, some slow one, mostly slow ones. And uh, just watching how the ADP has changed has been a lot of fun. And um, then we have free agency coming up. You know, there are players right now getting cut every day. Uh, a few players getting added, you know, but of course, uh, you know, it's going to be about one week and, uh, you know, we'll be in the thick of it. So uh, we also have that coming up. So our draft is going to start in like right now. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. We've got a lot of fun people in this draft, too. I know uh, our guest last week, uh, Toyo, is in the uh, 101. Uh, we have my former podcast partner, JD, um, uh, sitting in the 103, we're in the 104, uh, Liam is in the 108 and we have somebody called hunting stack hunters in the, That's the Joe, Carlton. Okay, Joe Carlton, Joe Carlton is 105. <laughs> so I, I, I'm assuming everybody's listening in, uh, so we're, we're, we're not giving anything away here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just circling back on the combine talk. I mean, this, I, I wouldn't, I'm not a huge college football guy. I'm not someone who's like grinded prospect ranks going into the year. I just kind of use this time, take in the info, um, and just try to n notice the freaks, if you would, from the combine. Like years past, this has put me on guys like uh, Chase Brown, you know, which worked out in the end. Um, Evan Hull, who did not work out, you know. Um, but, and then just to not put too much stock in the combine because guys like Kyron Williams, you know, I was looking at earlier today, someone was like, oh, this guy had a bad combine. I was like, well, here's Kyron Williams, uh, athletic score, you know, with the, the Kentley Platt Twitter things. And yes. it was like F minus athleticism, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So it, 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 all right, Bradley, do you have a strong lean here? I've taken a lot of Tyreek Hill at this spot. I'm open to taking uh, Brees Hall or Jamar Chase, but I think one of those three is where we go. Okay. Go ahead. Take take the guy that you prefer, because I've taken all three a lot too. Okay. Yeah, let's go with uh, Tyreek Hill. He was the wide receiver one 
in best ball value rating last year. Nothing's really going to change, you know. Um, he's not really rivaled in terms of like Jalen Waddle versus him for target share. Like Waddle's going to get his, but uh, we know it's going to be Tua. And the signing of Jonu Smith really doesn't move the needle for any of the Miami Dolphins pieces for me. So. <laughs> right. you're, not about, you're not worried about Tyreek Hill with John U. Smith on board. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a hot take right there. <laughs> We're starting strong, guys. We're starting strong. No, uh, the, I mean the top of the draft, you can't go wrong. But no. there are some guys I have a you know, if someone was going to lose a step between C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill. I'd certainly choose Tyreek, but I don't. I don't think that time's here. But you know, like guys like him and CMC were the were the best players in fantasy last year. But they're they're not without their risks, you know. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think uh, you know one of the one of the big risks with Justin Jeff, Justin Jefferson is just the fact that Kirk Cousins might not be back with the Vikings. Uh, you know, as the the off season has gone along, I think my confidence in uh, Cousins being back has been less and less. You know, I, w- I would have said about 90% confident um, a month, month and a half ago. At this point, I am maybe 30% confident, something like that. And, you know, depending on what the Vikings do, that could have a major impact on Justin Jefferson. So I'm kind of hitting pause on him right now in drafts, at least this early, because I think we're going to get the opportunity in a week or so if, Cousins goes elsewhere for for us to take Justin Jefferson quite a bit later. And if Cousins does sign, you know, I don't think Justin Jefferson's really going any earlier than what he's going. So, you know, to me, this is one of those situations where it's like, you just, you know, chill out, let other people take him here and, uh, you know, I'll wait a week or so until I have more information. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I I think especially for what we're playing, like we're not playing a tournament here tonight. Right. right? We're playing, we're playing a, a cash game. So ultimately, are we really worried about Justin Jefferson? Not that much, but we would strongly prefer Kirk Cousins be playing with him than probably whoever else will be. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, if you, you know, throw, uh, you know, J.J. McCarthy, uh, Sam Darnold, Russell Wilson, you know, all guys that have been rumored to the Vikings. Throw any of those in there, and, you know, I think Jefferson takes probably about a 15 20% haircut off his stats. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think about that? Am I way off here, or is that close? I think that's uh, – you're going to see two things at play. I think not only – your your performance like Kirk is still uh, Kirk Cousins one of the better you know solid quarterbacks in the NFL that's why he's been able to get so much guaranteed money but also the volume you know we're concerned about are is there going to be the co- is the offensive coaching staff for the Minnesota Vikings going to trust the quarterback whoever they are not Kirk Cousins to make the throws you know in are they going to make different calls for instance like running the ball close to the line of scrimmage instead of, you know, throwing it to Jefferson. So those are some things to consider as well, but. Yep, definitely, definitely. All right. And uh, Liam, why don't you tell us about your first two picks, Uh, you know, your thought process there. We've got uh, Amon Rossi at Brown and uh, Devin Achan there. Yeah, I mean, in a total, I mean, they're just two pretty safe picks as far as, fantasy value i mean amon raw can't go wrong there just a consistent target earner going to give you 20 points per week at one of your wide receiver spots and the nice thing about achan is you know i I like him even more in tournaments but just the ability to give you a 50 point week upside that (laughs) really not many players have access to and over the course of 17 weeks that can win you your your pod you know Yep, yep, definitely. All right, and uh, Bradley and I are up right now. Uh, we have three guys in the queue. Bradley, do you have a, a preference on any of these guys? Well, the, this is a turn like uh, this is not a tournament. This is you know cash. Jonathan Taylor though has fallen you know significantly. He's usually a one-two turn guy, and he's fallen 
you know, the 209. It's going to be hard not to click him here, Dan. I am totally on board with that. I, Taylor is a smash for me right here. All right, we'll go with him. Yeah, that's a that's a fun start. Yeah. What do we think um, with Anthony? If Anthony Richardson's healthy the whole season, I how how do you view that impacting Taylor? Because I still think he'll still have his huge weeks, but inevitably Richardson will probably take a bit, bit of touchdowns, but also maybe make the offense better. You know. Mm. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, the thing is, is it's. You know, a lot of times we see those running quarterbacks, uh, especially on RPOs, they can open up some big lanes for the running backs. So I, I think it's probably good for his rushing output. And, and Taylor, at least this past year, they're a little bit more reluctant to use him as a receiver. So I'm kind of, you know, when I'm forecasting how he's going to do this year, I'm figuring it's going to be a little bit less in the receptions. And also, you know, a lot of times with, uh, you know, guys like Richardson, we see him checking down a lot less anyway. So, you know, there's kind of a little bit of pressure on his, um, on his receptions there, which of course are the, the really, you know, high value touches other than touchdowns. But, you know, Taylor's a guy who can score from anywhere, you know, as, as uh, one of our good friends, uh, Noah Riddell put it, uh, when Taylor came into the league, he's like, he's like an anvil with a jet pack on the back. So, mm. you know, that's, uh, that's, that, that's kind of how I tend to think of him. <laughs> yeah. And I still think, you know, double digit rushing touchdowns are within the range of outcomes for Jonathan Taylor. The efficiency sure. is there. Um, I think the player that's most affected, frankly, is going to be Michael Pittman. Um, you know, his fancy points per game significantly dropped in the Anthony Richardson games. Obviously, small sample. I think that'll be better. But, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard because he was hurt. At, you know, he, it was only the beginning of the season, too. It's not like yeah. we saw Anthony Richardson get a chance to even develop, you know. Right. Yep. So there's at least more questions with, I think, Pittman than with, uh, you know, late second round Jonathan Taylor. Who do you think has the lead for the RB two job? I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's Evan Hull, but I love he, Evan Hull. I think yeah. Moss is out of there, right? Moss is mm -hmm. for sure out of there. I um, think so too. Yeah, I, I think Evan Hull's. You know, the the main thing he needs to worry about is a free agent landing there. All right. Yeah, or and, or a draft pick. Right. Yeah, it could be a draft pick too. Uh, thoughts here, Bradley. Uh, I mean, are we just going to be the value scoopers here, Dan? I think we are. I think we are. Right. I mean, <laughs> we'll just take Travis Kelsey. I mean, I, I, I don't know why we wouldn't. So, <laughs> all right. If people are going to give us these kind of picks, it's, it's fine. You know, I we'll can see it. why he, he fell a little bit in cash just because the concern is the Chiefs are going to save him again for the playoffs. But yeah. I mean, just too much, too much value where. He can't just be a consistent 20 points at tight end there in the third round, you know? And the tight right. end four off the board? Okay. like Yeah. When you can find Travis Kelsey in the third round in FFPC, that's uh, that's still unusual. Even though, you know, everybody's <coughs> kind of on board with the fact that, you know, Andy Reid has basically gone out and said, as, as Liam talked about, you know, hey, we're going to save him for the playoffs kind of like we did this year. So you know what you're getting. Uh, you know, you're, you, you're getting, uh, you know, Travis Kelsey, like he was, a you know, like a U-Haul trailer or U-Haul truck or something like that. You know, you're not getting over 65 miles, uh, an hour with him, but, um, you know, hopefully he can keep you up between 60 and 65 miles an hour the whole time. There are also some later tight ends that I don't mind like pairing with a Travis Kelsey type. So, yep, that's fine. Yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey is like, you know, safe as they come, for sure. All right. And Liam's on the clock here. A lot of different ways you can go. Mm hmm This time of year, I've not done a ton of drafts either, so. Hmm. I mean, Saquon is the, is the ADP value mm -hmm. by far. And I'm tempted to do that, but this time though, I'm gonna just grab Hertz. Okay. Nice. Don't mind that at all. Yeah, you know, quarterback's <laughs> weird this year where 
the Josh Allens, the Jalen Hurts, like Josh Allen, most, you know, like uh, drafting on underdog is way more expensive than Hurts, Lamar, Mahomes. And I think, I mean, that gap just has to shrink. At the same time, for something like this, just getting a little lock in my QB1 points with huge ceilings um, feels nice. But, you know, like you can get some really nice quarterbacks late. You can get, um, you know, the, the rookies are late. Trevor Lawrence is pretty cheap. Justin Herbert mm-hmm. is pretty cheap. So I'm like leaning towards late, later quarterbacks even more than I usually would be. But, you know, Hertz drops a couple 30 point, uh, 30 point weeks and I, it could help me ship this, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, basically the, you know, the main question you have to ask yourself is, you know, how important is Jason Kelsey to this line, uh, you know, as far as like the pass protection and also as far as, you know, the, you know, the tush push or the, you know, 30 different names for it. But, uh, you know, it's kind of all the same thing. The brotherly shove. The brotherly shove. Yes. So, you know, it, because the thing is, you know, he got 15 touchdowns on the ground last year Mm -hmm. and a majority of them, I think it was like 11 or so or 10 or 11 were, uh, you know, brotherly shove, um, you know, but I'm not sure that, you know, I view that that as a hurt. That's a Hurts thing to me, not yeah. Not to me, really. yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I don't think that's necessarily Kelsey. I think you can teach any center to do what needs to be done there. Yeah, and like it's not like the rest of the line's going to struggle, you know. Um, the big thing is always just staying healthy. I think he had a bit of a unlucky year too, and so right, you know, I'm still in as Hurts as QB two pretty comfortably, but you know, like you got your Jaden Daniels cheap. Joe Burrow is pretty cheap. Um, all these guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's, that's the thing. I mean, you know, there's, a, there's some good quarterbacks that have really dropped down in drafts right now. All right, Dan, we're up next and there's a lot of different ways we can go with this one. There are a few players though, that I, I kind of want to avoid at this spot. Okay. But maybe we can take, uh, as I we talked in the pre-show meeting, maybe high conviction players. If we're convinced that uh, your boy Kirk Cousins is going to move out of Minnesota, yeah, I you know okay. So one of the players we're looking at here is Drake London, uh, you know, because he's going to be gone by the time he comes back to us anyway. So yeah. I don't mind talking about him. And then Rashad White; those are the two players that we're looking at right now, and. You know, London, I think it's just, you know, the fact that Arthur Smith is out of there and yes. that they're not going to be, you know, yes. they're not going to be starting Desmond Ritter. You know, those are both two huge pluses <laughs> to London's game. And, you know, London is somebody I've always been very, very high on. So it's, you know, given that we already have a running back, we already have a tight end, I'm inclined to go wide receiver here, but I could yep. certainly be talked into Rashad White if if you have a, a lean that way, Bradley. Nope, I'm here for Drake London. I think I like those round six, round seven running backs a lot in my running back two slot. So, yep, we can go Drake London. All right, London it is. Because the pathway for London, like you have to think about it, he's coming off the board here at wide receiver 24, and he's finished like wide receiver 34, 36 or so his first two seasons. And with that bad quarterback play, Like the pathway for him to enter top 12, top 15 and pay off significantly. That's a, it's pretty easy way to win, you know, for a wide receiver too here. Yeah. And, and, and London still hasn't topped over like, uh, I think it's like 117 targets or something like that might even be Mm -hmm. less, you know, and, and the thing is, I mean, you know, if you have an offense that actually throws the ball, you know, with a competent quarterback, uh, you're going to see both better efficiency and a, a, a much greater volume as well. It feels like Kirk is like near a hundred percent to go to the Falcons. Now, is that is that how you guys are reading it, or or what would you what would you say? Yeah, um, it, over seventy percent at least. Like it's yeah. the the majority lean is there. Like I thought, I saw stuff about a house in in Atlanta. Looking at schools, I don't know. <laughs> right, there were yeah. rumors about him calling up Kyle Pitts to swap numbers or whatever, <laughs> um, like uh, <laughs> like jersey numbers. And then Kyle Pitts, I think, quote tweeted that report and was like, "Nah, brah, like that's not true." 
So <laughs> I'm I'm still at least mildly skeptical. But yeah, I've, yeah, I, I you know nothing ever happens until it happens. I mean, you know, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, they were talking about Justin Fields to Atlanta was a done deal. So you know, it, it, you, you don't want to get too invested in any scenario. Um, working out a particular way um, until the free agency dominoes exactly start to drop. Yeah, very fair. Where, speaking of fields, I mean, if he if he doesn't go to the Falcons, where is there a spot for him? I like Pittsburgh a lot. They say they're not interested. I'm not so sure about that. I saw uh, rumors to Pittsburgh today. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that too. Um, you know, and that that could be a way that they go as well. Um, I think there's a chance he ends up in uh, in New England. I mean, New England, they've got a lot of holes on their roster, you know, so they might they might decide to you know go ahead and punt again for another year, um, trade out of that pick, try to pick up some more assets, maybe pick up uh, you know. Hopefully, pick up a quarterback uh, late first, early second. They they do have an early second round pick, and and go that way. So, I I think there are a lot of possibilities still open for Fields, but um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see where he lands. Maybe Bradley better. thoughts thoughts on this pick. I got yeah. one guy in there, but uh, you oh ooh. there are others I like too. Yeah. Um. Throw a couple guys in the queue if there's somebody you like. Yeah. Let me see here. Hmm. I mean, we could go high conviction player, uh, correlation. Um, I'm open, open minded, Dan. You can make this pick. I've been making a lot of the picks. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go Zay here, um, okay. Zay Flowers. I, I, I like this pick a lot. I think year two, Zay Flowers is going to be uh, a really, really good pick. Uh, I I just see him taking another step forward in this offense. Uh, I think that, I do think that Baltimore is going to probably try to add somebody through the draft, but I'm not sure how, how high... Uh, they'll be able to add them because they've got a lot of issues. I mean, you know, they've got uh, like three of their offensive linemen are free agents, um, you know, so they've got some some things to work out there that are probably going to be a little bit more important than receivers. So I'm, I'm betting that it's still the uh, Mark Andrews, a Flowers show in, in uh, Baltimore, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, Flowers was good, uh, but a lot of his damage, like the big games happened with Mark Andrews out or limited. And so, you know, we I do like, you know, what Flowers and how they were manufacturing touches for him. I think he was one of only two players. I think he was the only non-running back to have rush, two rushes of 30 yards or more. So he's got the speed, he's got the dynamism, all of that. Um but with Andrews on the field, like Dan, do you Dan and Liam, like what are your opinions of the the belief that Andrews is like made of glass? Because that seems to be like the running narrative right now about Mark Andrews. I don't really buy it. Liam? Yeah, that's not really my belief. Um the Ravens offense in general is just interesting getting sorted out because we we don't fully know who the running back room is we don't fully know um what's going on with bateman's health like is, is this guy ever actually gonna is he is he gets suddenly gonna be healthy and like be a real star in the offense um zay flowers year two mark andrews coming back you had the likely mini breakout and then they'll probably add someone to replace obj who could be a little bit more target dominant not to mention, like maybe, maybe Keaton Mitchell is a little bit more target dominant. So, definitely an offense we want pieces of, but hard to sort through right now. Right, exactly. I'm I'm going to read off some numbers to you: um, 16, 15, 14, 17, 15, and 10. 
Those are the number of games Mark Andrews has played every year since he came into the league. I mean, for a tight end, that's really not that bad. You know, um, he he has been limited down, I will, I will admit, in some of those games that he actually did play. You know, so that I, I see where people are coming from, but I think there's just too much recency bias with the, you know, the 10 game uh, season, you know, being the last in the sample. And that's just what people are looking at. And they're, you know, thinking about times where he's been a little bit limited by injuries other than that. And, you know, so they come down on the side of, oh, well, he's injured. You know, but for best ball, I mean, you know, it, what, what we care about most is getting some of those big spike weeks in there. You know, if we can get eight or nine spike weeks out of a, a Mark Andrews, um, you know, we're probably going to be pretty happy with that. Definitely. Hmm. So All this right. is like definitely more running back heavy than underdog, which is almost always the case. You know, we got this guy just doing running back and tight end starts, flashers. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Choosing yep. between two players. Oh, I'm going to go this guy. I like it. I like that a lot. I think that's great. Yeah, so let's 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 talk a little bit about it. you know we've we've said this was going to be a rookie podcast. We haven't really talked about the rookies yet. Um, we saw Marvin Harrison go in the late second uh, to JD um, in the three hole, and then Malik Neighbors going at the five hole one, which I thought was a little bit late. Um, Super late. I mean, he goes yeah. in the third round on underdog. Right. Yeah, that was a, that was a very nice value by uh, Toyo there. And then we have a Dunze, and and I do think that is the right third wide receiver pick. Yeah, but the and, gap between him and Neighbors and Harrison is like pretty big, which maybe that's maybe that's warranted. But you know, a Dunze is getting in that cost where maybe a a good team could trade up for him, mm -hmm. um, or maybe he's you know like even if he even if like the Bears take him, being Caleb Williams. Uh, maybe 1B, maybe eventually 1A, who knows, or just his two after DJ Moore sounds pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, Team 6 didn't let Anthony Richardson come back to us. I know, but, we were hoping. <laughs> I'm not too surprised by that. Um, I, I have like, right now. Uh, I, I do have, like I have a, who you have in your queue. Okay. Do you like one better than the other? Well, you've got your biases for the second one. <laughs> we'll go with uh, – I'm happy with uh, Ramondre Stevenson here, if you're okay with it. I am definitely okay with that. I, I, I think Ramondre is actually in a fairly nice spot because I don't think that this is a – I don't think this is a place where the Patriots will really want to spend up at running back, either through the nope. draft or free agency. Uh, you know, so Ramondre is – strikes me as a fairly sneaky value because he can do, you know, he can definitely do it all. We've seen him, uh, you know, do very well rushing. Uh, he can handle the goal line pass, you know, handle himself in the passing game. He can pass protect pretty well. So, you know, it's, it's the kind of player that I like to take. And even on these bad teams, I mean, you know, sometimes it comes down to check down, check down, check down at the end of the game. And, you know, all of a sudden they start yeah. picking up all these uh, PPR attempts. So, yeah, yeah and I don't think PPR. I don't think he should go after Jacobs. I don't think he should go after James Conner. He probably shouldn't go after Kamara. He probably shouldn't go after, you know, uh, Tajay Spears, um, who they could easily add another guy. Mm -hmm. um, and with with Bill out of there, maybe Ramondre gets used even a little bit more. Yeah, that could be. And the offense will obviously be better than what it was. Yes, and even with how bad it was last year, Stevenson weekly finishes in PPR running back 13, 17, 6, 15, 2, 27, 20, and then 7, so not just 27. Uh, Ramondre, like, that was in a bad offense, splitting a lot of that with Ezekiel Elliott, too. And whether or not Zeke comes back, you know, I think that that's a – Ramondre is undervalued here at the back end of, back end of the sixth round. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
And for the record, Bradley, I, I like who you have in the queue. Um, and I like the guy you have at two more than one. I'm okay with that, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm okay with going number the second person. That's fine. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go with uh, Tony Pollard, then. Um, yep. With especially a lot of rumblings coming out, Matthew Barry's report, but also just speculation in general that you know Pollard was very successful in Dallas when Zeke was the the between the tackles guy, and Pollard was catching balls out of the backfield. He had the running back one and running back two finishes back in 2022 in weekly uh, two weeks, and both of those well those games combined, Zeke had 36 touches in those games where Pollard finishes running back one, running back two. So I think it's actually better for Pollard that there's someone between the tackles taking taking some blows. Yeah, I would agree with that. And also, I think, you know, with Pollard, I think his injury um, at the end of the 2022 season was a lot worse than all of us thought. Um, you know, I I kind of talked myself a little bit out of Pollard uh, in the early off season, and then, I, I I let myself get sucked back in uh, later in the season. So it's probably my fault, Dan. Probably my fault. No, 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 no. I mean, it was it wasn't just you. I mean, it was just like you know, it was it was sort of coming from everywhere, and I it, you know, I I just started you know just kind of you know following along with the crowd on that one a little bit more than I probably should have. So uh, you know, that one's on me. Yeah, I, I would have uh, I would have taken Pollard for sure if he made it back to me. I like Montgomery too. Mm-hmm. I just kind of took Dallas Goddard. I honestly, it's not my favorite pick in total points, but hitting two tight ends, hoping to go a little thinner there. I'm obviously going to need to take a bunch of running backs. Yep. Um, and like the six seven range feels great for value on running back. And then you get to some names who some of these guys are going to have great years. Some of these guys are going to have disaster years. You know, like Austin Eckler could have another disaster year. Nick Chubb for sure could have a disaster year or could rebound. Um, Joe Mixon could have a disaster year. How are you guys feeling about this range where it's a lot of like the running backs of yesteryear, if you would? Yeah, I think there is like this teardrop from like Najee Harris um, and – Uh, Brian Robinson down to like where you're mentioning like those types of running backs and uh, like with Eckler I think we if we're giving injury discounts I think there were injuries at play for Eckler last year like significantly at play Uh, Mixon has never been an efficient back so I think landing spot dependent is going to be for him given the rumblings of him being cut yet again so I think he's going to be more running uh, landing spot dependent but yeah, I, I, he's probably I, a QP candidate. Yeah, I, I'm still not convinced that Mixon is going to get cut because the thing is, is you know, Cincinnati has plenty of cap room for him. He already took a pay cut last year, uh, you know, which is also in effect this year. And you know, he knows the offense. Um, he's a he's a team leader. You know, he's he's well liked within the team. Uh, you know, I know that uh, you know the, he, he's. He's got some issues outside of football, and you know I I, I don't want to uh, you know totally poo poo those, but on the other hand, you know I the way I look at it is I'm I'm just out here buying player stats. I'm not really endorsing any player and their behavior or anything like that. I think everybody's you know almost everyone has skeletons in the closet somewhere somehow. It's just which ones are going to come out. So. Uh, I, I just have a hard time, uh, you know, not taking somebody because of their behavior outside of football. All right, Bradley. So are you a Joe Mixon over Chase Brown guy? I am. I'll, I'll take Mixon over Brown for I sure. Think, I think I'm Chase Brown. I'm, are you? I'm Chase Brown in, in that conversation. And I, I, I do have some Chase Brown shares, so I'm not. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not. Totally I think Mixon's off that. out of there. Yeah. Well, okay. I could be. I could be wrong. It'll be interesting to he's see. Just, you know, he's just a guy to me. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. All right, Bradley. What are you thinking here? I like uh, both of I, the guys you got up there. I think those are the right guys to be deciding 
between. I, I like the wide receiver. I prefer him. But All right, let's take him. We need a wide receiver anyway. We need, uh, we need a wide receiver. DeAndre Hopkins still has spike week, uh, spike week to his name. And uh, the offensive line for Tennessee was the worst in the NFL last year. It can only get better. And same thing with Will Levis. He can only get better. He's going to now get all the offseason reps. He's not going to be splitting with Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Hopkins will be there. And or or if he's not, you know, he'll still be probably on the number one somewhere else. So give me Hopkins in round eight. Mm-hmm. And, and can I say, Austin Eckler at the end of round eight, I mean, you know, anything could happen here, but that's a great place to speculate on Eckler, I think. Yeah, I mean, I took I took Herbert, so yep. And, and some people are feeling down on the passing game. With I don't love the Greg Roman signing, no. uh, but you know the offense as a whole should be better. Hopefully, they take a guy like Neighbors, a guy maybe they get Marvin Harrison Jr. somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and Herbert just feels too cheap. Eckler, Eckler's hard man. I really don't know what to do with Eckler at this at this time um yeah i i I think eckler is basically you know a big giant lottery ticket you know and this is the spot i'd like to take him uh you know when we're you're talking running back 26 i think the downside is minimal you know if your eighth round pick doesn't hit uh it's definitely definitely not the end of the world Uh, but to your to herbert point uh, (laughs) i would just like to talk about a, a guy named Dak Prescott that everybody was down on last year that because, you know, they were going to run the ball too much. And, you know, that's what they said their philosophy was going to be is we're going to come out and run the damn ball and so forth like that. And Dak Prescott ended up working out pretty well for people. And I think I, I think you're sitting in a nice spot there, Liam, with uh, Herbert. Because, you know, the thing is, you know, it, it, it comes down to Jim Harbaugh is going to want to win games. And the best way to win games is Justin Herbert. Absolutely. It makes me not love taking the Hurts pick, but I'm definitely done at two quarterbacks. Um, probably going to stop pretty light at tight end, too. Taking Kincaid, who I feel good about, and Goddard, who is hit or miss. Um, and then, yeah, it's time to start t- taking some uh, running back darts and hope it works out. Yep. And uh, Bradley, I, I like the guy we have at our number one hole here. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm always a sucker for DeAndre Swift. So, you know, he's probably – I'm way too exposed to Swift, which is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where yeah, do you it, think he plays? I, that's a great question. I think that's a very great question. I mean, you know, if he gets re-signed at Philly, I'm probably going to be a little bit disappointed by that. Um, I don't I think like he'll. I don't think he'll resign. The whole point of him being traded is they'll get a comp- compensatory pick. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So I think he'll go somewhere else. Um, I've heard rumblings of Washington. I've heard rumblings of Carolina. Um, I would, because um, uh, Carolina Canales came out and uh, said that he wants to, or whoever the offensive coordinator is there now. Uh, came out and said that they want to run the ball. And obviously Chuba Hubbard, you know, played admirably last year. But Swift brings a whole new dimension. He can catch way more efficiently. He can run more efficiently. He, The, the problem with Swift is he just doesn't have the dog in him, <laughs> which is ironic given that he went to, you know, Georgia. But um, at running back 29, like the pathway for Swift, who has historically hit significant um, spike weeks in the past, is uh, it's a good bet on value at that point. And uh, poor Liam just got sniped on his Chase yes, Brown. I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, I <know. laughs> That's nothing like March snipes, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 I I'm gonna guess in, in, up, in times yeah. is listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely deserve it for bringing the name up. Uh, before it's, it's my turn. Uh, it's okay. That's- Yep. Well, there's been a running back run right now. Swift, White, Mostert, Chase Brown. and Yeah, just in case these guys are running back starved, I went Trey Benson, (laughs) who should be the first 
running back off the board. Uh, yeah, I think there's a good chance of that. Um, yeah. And that feels good, you know, getting that at a ninth round cost. Benson yeah, I like and Marshawn Lloyd, I, I think one, two, pretty close. You, you you probably pissed off Flashers in the eleven hole. I'm sure he was wanting to go Benson there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta get your running backs to the tight end. I'm just saying. Phenomenal. Yeah, I it, it, honestly, I've I've experimented with uh, with builds like that before, going like super running back heavy, super tight end heavy like that, and just saying, you know what, I'm gonna try to. You know, just piece it together at wide receiver at the end, and you know there. I have seen a a year or two where that's worked, but it it hasn't worked for me. It's so. not the build for me; it's the players. You know, like Derrick right. Henry in the third round is kind of insane because, I mean, we don't know where he's playing. We don't know what. I mean, maybe he'll have the one A somewhere, but. Yeah, don't love that on a half point PPR site. Pratt Fryermuth is not the most, you know, like I, I probably like a guy like Dalton Schultz more than Fryermuth um, attached to CJ Stroud. So I don't know. I, funky builds definitely can work, but yep. I guess the plan is to go volume at wide out. It's just not my favorite players for the build. A lot of running, a lot of old running backs. Right, exactly. I mean, it, you know, actually, I like uh, the Brian Robinson pick where he took him. I just don't like him in that build. You know, like that's that to me is a point where you know, it, if I could get Brian Thomas rather than uh, Brian Robinson when I'm already four running backs deep, I think that's the move I'm going to make. But that you know, again, he's he's kind of doing a different sort of build. And like I say, I've seen this build work. I, there was one guy who like three or four years ago. Took builds like this, and he absolutely smashed. I'm gonna grab the drink, guys. A, sure. Yep. I think it was a 2021 season, and this guy did build after build after build like that, and just absolutely smashed. And you know, I I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm looking through. You know, because you can go on uh, Rotoviz, you know, and you can look through, you know, like, uh, you know, different builds and how they did in different years and so forth like that. It was just the absolutely perfect year to do it. So I tried it a few years or, or, or a few times. Maybe it was even 2020. And I tried it in 2021. And it just, it, 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 it did not work out well for me. <laughs> no, you need the... You need the right players at the right time. Like it, you need to thread the needle perfectly with that type of build. And uh, it's like a parlay, you know, a multi-tiered parlay that most likely is not going to work for anybody. So uh, yep. look, Dan, we, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like the number one right there. I mean, perfect. I think that's our pick. Okay. We're going to go with your boy, Kirk Cousins. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't care where he's at. At quarterback seventeen, <laughs> that's insane value. Whether he's in Atlanta, whether he's in Denver, whether he's in Minnesota, whatever, it's insane value. Yeah, I'm adding a few others to the to the queue. Yep, to the queue. Just players that I like or might be good values. But let's see. Uh, Liam came back and. <sighs> got uh ty chandler who's currently the mm -hmm. running back one for your minnesota vikings we can talk about um you know your thoughts on that dan given that alexander madison was released from the minnesota vikings and uh and ty chandler is now the uh running back uh presumed presumed running back one for the minnesota vikings so uh do you think the vikings attack running back in the draft are they in line to a get one in free agency create some competition. I, I think running backs are going to be cheap enough in free agencies that they're going to they're going to grab somebody here. Uh, you know, so Chandler he's he's good. I like him. He's got juice. You know, which which is what you want to see. But he's just not a very good pass blocker, and mm -hmm. that is going to be problematic for keeping him on the field for you know enough downs. So I see Chandler as being like, you know, a guy who's going to be between, you know, like probably 40 to 55% of the snaps, but not up into the level where he's going to be really, really a great value. 
He's not the safest pick in the world, but no. I I like the roll of dice on him over a lot of the guys in his range, you know, over right. Jerome Ford, who could be dealing with Nick Chubb and another guy, um, probably over Roshan, over Kendra Miller, like, you know, yeah, guys like him and Chase Brown, Zamir White, it's not locked that they are the RB1s, but they should at least be in the mix. And, right. you know, pass blocking is something you can improve on. It 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 is, and um, you know, it, and the thing I'll throw out, you know, I think the most important thing is that he's got juice, you know. And at this point of the draft, you know, when you can draft guys who have juice, that's what you want to do. Uh, Bradley, I like the uh, I I actually kind of like the number two guy here. Uh, yeah, okay. I think number one is safe. I think number two has got the a little bit of the the stink of upside around him still. Well, we can go with stink of upside because why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we'll go with, uh, Hollywood Brown here. Uh, this is, this is a, a nice little spot. I think for a player who usually commands 22 to 25% target share wide receiver 47, but it was really hard, Dan, to pass up our number one guy. I don't want to mention him because, you know, sniper's going to snipe right. sometimes instead of stack hunters, uh, Liam, the nickname that some of our uh, co-drafters have been calling us is uh, the Snipe Hunters because people have been sniping us. So, um, yeah, there's a guy that uh, is currently the – he was wide receiver 25 in terms of best ball value rating still out there right now um, just hanging out. So, yeah, Hollywood is who I would have probably taken if it got back to me. So I obviously like that pick. There's some other players too. I'm rolling the dice on Jonathan Brooks, the you know the other guy who could be in the mix for rookie RB one. Um, I don't I don't exactly know when he's going to return from his injury, but you know could return and do most. I think most people would have him as the RB one if he was not hurt. So mm-hmm. guys yeah, like that. You're right. Yeah, that's a, a, a that's a guy who you're gonna want you know some of your other running backs to carry the water until about November or so, and then uh, hope that he's really starting to uh, heat up at that point. And I, I I do like Jonathan Brooks. I think you know he's gonna he's gonna go cheap in uh, dynasty in rookie drafts just for that same reason you know just because you won't be able to use him necessarily right out of the box so. Uh, and it, if it pushes down his NFL draft price at all, which I think it probably will, you know, I think it's more likely to push him into the third round. If somebody takes him in the second round, I'm going to be all over Jonathan Brooks in a dynasty situation where I don't necessarily have to rely on him this year. In best ball, I think, you know, you still have to take, you have to have one eye on that uh, knee injury and, and, and be worried about that, though. After Tajay Spears played the season without a uh, <laughs> ACL, I doesn't have an MCL or whatever. I'm just like, all right, these injuries don't matter for these young guys. Deal with them later. Um, and yeah, I think I mean there's, there's a real chance that a team falls in love with Brooks at the end of round two, middle of round two, trades up to get him. Um, maybe even just as a bit of a stash. But I like yeah. his upside. I, I, I like your running back core because it's it, there's a there's a ton of speed and a ton of upside there. I mean, you know, with it, HN, Benson, Chandler, Brooks. I mean, you know, that's the, that's a draft that's using with upside. You know, and we're not we're not, we're not playing for third or fourth place in this thing. You know, it's uh, you know basically first place or bust. You know, second place gets you your money back, but that's it. So you know, when you're going for first place or bust, you don't want to be too timid. There are a ton of different guys I'm considering here. Um, I think I'm just going to go with the safety of Lockett. I might regret that pick, but, you know, Lockett just probably back in Seattle, probably back 15-ish points per game. Really solid as my word out for it. And the thing is, I mean, you know, you you take a look at – Lockett's history. Last year was like the one year where he didn't have, you know, like a couple of, you know, 30, 40 point weeks. And he, you know, most other years he's gotten you that. So, you know, I, I just love the fact that he, he can just go absolutely ham in a game. Uh, you know, especially in a best ball format where, you know, 
you, you get those weeks and it's like, you know, that's all gravy going into I was your considering lineup. Sutton too. I think it's pretty close between those two. Um, and then a, another wide out I also was considering. Yep, yep, for sure. And I think Bradley I'm just throwing a lot of players in the queue. Don't mind uh don't mind me. They're all over the place. I, I don't mind if you do. I I like one of the top two though. I think it's uh it's it's time to solidify that position a little bit. Yep. I'm open-minded. Yep. Which one do you want? I mean, I think the the real upside is with number one. I think the safety is with number two. And <coughs> we can go with the upside pick. Okay. Because we took some safety with Kirk Cousins. I, I agree. I think I think the upside pick is the way to go. Let's uh all right. Deshaun Watson. At quarterback 24, I'll take that chance. Yes. He's he's a very difficult player to evaluate, you know? He really is. <laughs> From the highest of highs to, I mean, he just wasn't even good last year, you know? No, he was bad. No, he was, I mean, okay he, he was kind of fighting through an injury, too. So, you know, you, you got to wonder how much that factored into it. <laughs> You know, I felt like he... You got to wonder of, when you get paid that much money how much you attack rehab as as maybe you would have when you were younger. Yeah, you know? that's, that's... Not that point. I know anything, but it's just part of the part of the equation. Yeah, for sure. So a couple, a couple of rookies uh, that went off the board at wide receiver. We had uh, Troy Franklin going off uh, about two rounds before Xavier Worthy. Um Thoughts on Franklin or Worthy at wide receiver, you guys? Uh, both fast guys. Franklin, probably not quite as fast as what we thought. Xavier Worthy, faster than what we thought. Uh, any any thoughts, guys, on those and uh, preferences there? And Ed and I, Mitchell, also just went off, too. I think all those guys are fun. Um, worthy, I mean, how could, how could he not be fun? I think Ad Mitchell is a guy who had a great combine. I don't know as much about Franklin. Um, I'm still, what's the what's the big deal on Franklin? Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, basically with Franklin, uh, you know, he's just he's a he's he's a thin build, um, you know, as far so you wonder how well he's going to do at the NFL level, you know, whether he's going to get knocked off or not, or um, and and by the way, Bradley, I I like the. Uh, the number one pick here. Um, you can go with that, yeah. Okay. So we're starting to see a lot of rookies come off the board right now. You know, it's a you know you get into the ninth, tenth round, and all of a sudden the rookies really start going. So we've seen uh, we've seen Franklin, uh, Braylon Allen, Jonathan Brooks, Blake Corum, uh, Xavier Worthy. Um, well, Worthy and Mitchell, you know, they they played together in Texas, and and Worthy was the 5'11", 160 guy. So yep. for him to translate his game, you know, my concerns are: is he going to be able to bulk up enough to take some hits at the NFL level? Because the safeties in college are not the safeties that are in free agency right now. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of people are going to point to Devonta Smith, you know, and say here's a here's a pretty slight guy as well that uh, you know has has done fine at the pro level, and you know we've got Tank Dell, but Tank Dell, you know, has got a, a, a much higher BMI than like a Jalen Wright. Uh, you know, my my hope would be if you're or, uh, sorry, not Jalen Wright, Xavier Worthy. My hope would be with Xavier Worthy that you're you know that he's going to be able to bulk up a little bit. You know that maybe he went real skinny trying to be fast for the combine and then uh, hopefully bulk up a little bit, you know, as far as like what he actually plays at. I don't know how that, if, if that's going to work out or not, but uh, that would be my hope if I took him. Seems uh, quarter quarterbacks really fly off the board where, you know, round 10, you're getting some guys you feel really good about in fantasy. Tua, <laughs> Trevor, Kirk, um, Caleb Williams, Right. And then 
you know, right after you guys took Watson, next goes Mayfield, Geno, Daniel Jones, guys who either have ceiling concerns or starting concerns in Jones' case, um, health concerns. So pretty interesting market dynamic. Yeah, for sure. And I, honestly, looking at how the quarterbacks went, uh, I'm, I'm going to come in with my first regret. I think if I had to do it over again, I'd have taken Jaden Daniels over Marquise Brown. Mm. Uh, because I think Jaden Daniels... That's a, a fun good, pick. Yeah, I think it's a fun pick, and I think it fits really well with Kirk Cousins. It's a good pick, too, yeah. Yeah, so it just, you know, you got the you got the safety in Cousins, you got the upside in Daniels, and it, it just, yeah it would work out really well. So there, there's my first regret. Yeah, I mean, Daniel should for sure be drafted over Cale Williams to me um, yeah. in fantasy, that is. Right. Not in the, not in the not reality. Because, okay, what's Cale going to do? Is he going to have C.J. Stroud's ear, you know, which is like one of the best rookie quarterback passing seasons we've seen of all time? Um, that's the That's the bar to like be super fantasy relevant or like Mahom- Mahomesian stuff his second year. It truly his like first year playing. Um, Daniels, Daniels doesn't even have to be that good, you know, just run for 700 to 900 yards. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, th- I think, you know, when we talk about the, you know, going back to the wide receivers in this class, uh, there was a pretty good debate going yesterday on Twitter between uh, Scott Barrett, uh, I, I think uh, Matt Harmon was in there. You know, they were talking about, yeah. you know, is this really a good wide receiver class or is it not? And, you know, I, I guess one of my thoughts is, you know, the, the thought is, is, you know, almost like, well, these guys are all getting pushed up because of, you know, the fact that it, the NFL has figured out, you know, that it's better to, to give these early first round pick contracts to wide receivers rather than like a running back or a linebacker or whatever. Um, You know, so it's, it's the positional, uh, you know, it's, it's the position of wide receiver that's actually pushing them up the board. And I think when you're talking about, you know, I, I think you can throw your, the first three, four wide receivers out of that conversation because I think they'd be going there no matter what, <coughs> you know. It's but it's guys going later in the first round, and I almost wonder, you know. And also, you know, people are saying, well, this, you know, these guys are really fast, and you know, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be thinking about the combine that much, you know, because it doesn't really help wide receivers that much, you know. It's more what they did in college that's important than uh, you know what their track speed is or anything else. And I think there's a little bit of, you know, just because this whole wide receiver class seems to be a little bit faster than the other classes, that that's almost being held against them. And it's like, you know, but what are they supposed to do? You know, they're, they're how fast they are. Uh, any thoughts on those, that guys, you know, as to whether that, uh, you know, does the speed really make this wide receiver class worse? Well, you know, a lot of the NFL teams are going to be looking for that that speed. And um, uh, I'll, I'll finish the thought here in a second, but um, I'm a, I have a high conviction guy at number one in the queue. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, you know, there, there, there's one way where he gets wiped out, but other than that, I think it's, uh, I think it's a perfectly good pick. This is a Tyler Conklin's a guy I stay up late watching film on. You know, just late at night. Billy Muzio has called me. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm watching Tyler Conklin film." You know, <laughs> Bradley, <laughs> are you wearing pants? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, but to to bring it back to the Scott Barrett um, discussion. Uh, JJ Zach Reese and Matt Harmon uh, were all in this discussion. Scott Barrett put a tweet out about a day ago. He said, Round one through three wide receivers drafted since 2020 with a college career yards per route run less than two. And he mentioned Amari Rogers, Tyquan Thornton, Devin Duvernay, Jonathan Mingo, Terrence Marshall, Michael Wilson, Chase Claypool, Josh Palmer, Van Jefferson. And all of those were, you know, drafted technically rounds one through three, but then uh, Scott Barrett followed up with here are those guys 
uh, in the 2024 class who are projected round one and two, Brian Thomas, Brian Thomas, Keon Coleman, Adnai Mitchell, Xavier Leggett, Ricky Pearsall, and Jalen Polk. And uh, Mitchell, Coleman, and Thomas are all possible first-round picks. So, you know, it, it's it's tough because if the NFL puts them in a round one, I think that shifts the narrative a little bit. But there are some red flags for Leggett and Pearsall and Polk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um... we're on the clock, though, so we got to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I think. No, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> no, I I think the number three guy in our queue um, probably makes some sense, especially with uh, one of our earlier picks. Yep, let's do it. Firms our position up, and yep. you know what? There we go. Maybe Tennessee gets a real you know offense going instead of Derrick Henry centered. Yes, I mean, and, Will uh, Levis got, you know, he, he's fun. He's he's a more fun pick than Bryce Young, than Baker, probably. Uh, you know, pro- probably than Stafford, even like Daniel Stafford, Jones. Stafford and Carr. He's, he's quarterback kind of 29. Like, w- there's nothing but upside there. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and by the way, I lost in all this conversation. I like the Mike Williams pick where you took him, Liam. Yes. I, I think that's fantastic. I mean, such a. Such a great value. You're getting him a wide receiver 61. I mean, what are we well, even doing here? I mean, he might not even, like, who knows what what's going to happen with him. But, I mean, stacking with Herbert, if he is if he is somehow to be healthy, that's a 15-point-per-game player. Right. Uh, and I can afford that upside, especially with, you know, I'm counting on Amon Ra, I'm counting on Higgins. Running back is really the position where I'm just going to have to – hope some guys hit um and probably just take a bunch of them yeah but i mean that's that's kind of a bully pick right there with the rest of your wide receiver squad you know it's like it, if williams hits and it and i don't even know that he'll be in uh in los angeles with the chargers anymore because you know they've still got some salary cap to trim and he's probably one of the easier guys to trim especially considering uh you know what they can get in this draft you know, when you look, you look at what's available in the draft to them versus, you know, what they're paying Williams, it, it seems like that's probably going to be a really easy cut. But the thing is, when they cut him, it, Mike Williams is going to instantly be one of the most desirable free agents out there, I think. You know, just based on what he does. I mean, you know, he's a contested catch guy who can, uh, you know, you can use him around the goal line. Uh, you know, you can you can use him down the field. You know, he can he can do medium, long, or goal line pretty much. And he could end up, you know, he could end up on the Chiefs on like a one year. Right. Deal. Exactly. Like Ooh, that. <laughs> Look out. Yep. Totally. Yeah, that's I also uh, like uh, Mario Douglas, the wide receiver, one for New England. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think he will be the wide receiver one for New England by the time, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're playing actual snaps in September. But the thing is, I think he's going to be a very useful piece for New England. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think he's, especially in a full PPR here, uh, you know, I, I think he's a great player. I mean, he was pretty good last year. Did he even catch a touchdown? I don't think he did. No, I, I debated between him and Jerry Judy and Gabe Davis. I thought all three were in the mix but douglas just seems a safe you know with some more upside guys i have in mike williams and t higgins douglas just seems he rounds out my room pretty nice counting Mm -hmm. on 10 to 11 points every week with an occasional touchdown thrown in there yep for sure and and bradley i didn't even think about it but we we never did uh any of our uh commercial promotions um well we can do that now if that i have it all queued up if you're uh if you're ready all right guys it is best ball season but it is also dynasty season so let's hear a word from the podfather himself about the dynasty dominator app now i know many of you are looking for a secret weapon for your dynasty league and i have it it's called the dynasty dominator app you go to the app store go to google play it's right there it's five dollars to download and then every year it's five dollars to load the next incoming class of rookies, you can 
add Superflex, add tight end premium. It's incredible because it allows you to look up players. It allows you to vote on whether a player is a buy, hold, or sell, and then see the market sentiment on that player. And you can compare their lifetime value rating from Player Profiler to their Dynasty ADP at the FFPC, all in the price lookup tool. And beyond that, we have a trade analyzer. So you'll never lose another Dynasty trade again. And in our settings, you can set, this is a win now team, this is a rebuilding team. And then we let you compare players. Look at their metrics side by side. Prospect metrics, NFL metrics. It's all there. It's five bucks in the app store. There's some add-ons for super flex and to buy the upcoming rookie class. Every year, you're going to spend $5 on this thing. And it's going to be well worth it. That's right. It is well worth it. But uh, Liam did time out there for Keaton Mitchell. So. I know I was letting the ad run for you guys, so okay. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean I don't know. Mitchell's a roll of the dice when he returns from injury, if he returns from injury. Um but if he does, give me some big weeks. Yep. Theo Greminger can't sleep on the clock somewhere. All right. Um, two of our <laughs> players I had three players in the queue. Two of them went off right before our pick, uh Shipley and Mims. I I don't know how you feel about this one, Bradley, but uh, I, I do like the remaining player in our queue. I think uh, as a free agent, he's got a lot of interesting landing spots, and he is known to be a good guy around the goal line. So, Yeah, I'm here for it. The Let's click him. Let's make it happen for sure. Done. Um, he's He was one of my favorite players last year to pair with. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, um, but to pair with like one of those high high swinging uh, tight ends, whether it was a Kelsey or an Andrews or whoever. And, uh, you know, Henry paid off, but there were fails from those early tight ends. So, you know, I like, I like Hunter Henry and, and Billy will always uh, give me grief because it was one of the early players that he and I debated whether Hunter Henry was made of glass. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, and, uh, and, uh, one of, one of my, uh, podcast partners from days gone by and uh it andrew schellenberg mm. is well known as a hunter henry hater uh, so <laughs> we, we we always enjoyed sparring about him all right well we've got um let's do a quick recap of how teams are looking right now uh, you know liam began with amon ra then went devon achan Jalen Hurts in round three came back with tight end Dalton Kincaid anchored pretty well with just a Chan through the first eight rounds, uh, went double tight end, double quarterback through round eight. Odunze was a good value in round six T Higgins as well in round five, but then rattled off a few more running backs, Benson Chandler and Brooks followed by some late veterans and rookies. Uh, rookie Lad McConkey, so Lockett, McConkey, Mike Williams, Demario Douglas, and then Keaton Mitchell, round 16 uh, for Liam. And then for Dan and myself, co drafting here, Tyreek Hill at four, Jonathan Taylor, Kelsey, Drake London, Zay Flowers at our wide receiver three, then Ramondre Pollard went Hopkins in round eight. Swift in round nine. Cousins, our first quarterback off the board at quarterback 17. Hollywood, Deshaun Watson, Marshawn Lloyd as running back 47 off the board. And then Tyler Conklin, tight end 25. I think Conklin has 10 touchdowns in his range of outcomes. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> I'm here for that. Yeah, you basically got to avoid the uh, the Brock Bowers yes. landing there uh you know as, as long as bowers doesn't land there i think it, you, conklin's a, a fantastic tight end uh we had him here in minnesota for a couple of years and uh he i think he's always been underrated a little bit he outplayed kyle rudolph for a couple of years too you know like right exactly i mean not that that's a super high bar to clear uh, <laughs> i've always liked him um uzuma's out of there now we do have questions, though, of who's going to be out of there is not the best thing because, I mean, Jeremy Rucker could be <coughs> in the mix. And then also, um, 
Kuntz or who yeah, they drafted Kuntz, last yeah. year. Um, maybe, you know, that guy's an athletic freak. Maybe that guy develops, but I agree. Conklin is like pencil him in for 500 to 600 yards, maybe a little bit more in a good year. Um, 60 receptions. Got, yeah. With, with Rogers there, maybe he does have a Robert know, Tunyon a year. Season. Yeah. So let's go, go baby. Go. All right. Thoughts, Bradley. Um, I mean, one of them is a clear value by ADP. The other one is, I think, uh, you know, a more intriguing player in some ways. We can we can go Thielen. I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, this is this is just a point where you know I'm I'm happy to take the value presented by Thielen. I think he's still going to be an integral part of that offense uh, in Carolina. Um, I, I do expect him to add some pieces, but, um, you know, it, this late in a draft, why not? See, Josh Larkey gets his Conklin standing from me. He, he heard about my late nights watching film, you know. <laughs> no, shout out to Josh Larkey, who's uh, crushing it on the Dominator uh, show. If you guys haven't checked it out, check out Josh Larkey's uh, dominator show he does that every week he just had um uh oh oh why am i blanking help me out dan Jer- uh jordan his uh, yes. buddy jordan on and jordan and uh josh crushed it on the podcast yep yep yeah jordan vanek that's right see i got it before theo put it in the chat let's go <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> So shout out to Josh on the Dominator. He's been crushing it since uh, he's returned to the Roto Underworld. So this is great. Yep. All right. Yeah, so we did go Adam Thielen there. I think that, you know, Carolina oh, is... I, I see you're old and I raise you an old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go! Oh! <laughs> Zach Ertz. Ooh. I love it. Commanders. Earth so good. Yes. Earth so good. Re, re, reunited with uh, Cliff Kingsbury as well. Ooh. I mean, you know, when you're talking the horizontal raid, you've got to have a player like Ertz. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Logan Thomas was released, so. Jesus, exactly. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, let's get rid of the 32-year-old guy. And we'll go with a, uh, what, 33, 34-year-old guy? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hope is just he has a couple eight catch games, which is pretty massive for. Honestly, I mean, you know, there's a there's a fair chance that you know Kingsbury is going to design like plays in the offense for this guy and pepper him. Um, I don't I don't hate this pick at all, especially because we know that he was targeted this early in free agency. Right, like he the, they went out of their way to sign him. He, he was terrible, though, last year in terms of efficiency. Out of yeah. qualified tight ends, uh, he was – out of 43 qualified tight ends, he was 42nd in PFF receiving grade. He was 42nd in um, uh, yards per route run, and he was like 43rd in quarterback rating when targeted. It was just atrocious, so – yeah, sorry. Like <laughs> he's gonna do it because of volume, not because of efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's a volume guy. And uh <laughs> without all that volume, maybe Trey McBride's not Trey McBride, you know. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? So Don't tell that got... to Theo. Theo will uh Theo will uh ban you from player profiler if you besmirch Trey McBride, you know. Oh no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's okay. Uh, I've thrown a couple, or I've thrown one of the tight ends in the, um, in the, in the chat to appease our boss here, Dan. Okay. But, um, we can th- look at a few others. Um, I'll keep scrolling, see if I can add some of my favorites and I'm sure you'll add Dan some Hudson of your favorites. Is another guy I was going to take if Ertz, I was considering going Hudson and Ertz, but mm-hmm. I'll probably mm-hmm. stop at three. And start to <laughs> roll the dice on, on random running backs here. Yeah. Why not? All right. I threw a couple other guys in there, too. Ooh. Theo has a question for you, Liam. 
Man, Hawkinson was my guy last year, and it was it was all working out. But no, at the at the current moment, I, I'm scared about the I'm scared about um, the injury. I mean, I really I don't know. I don't have a ton of info on it um, as far as when we're expecting him back. It, whether Kirk Cousins is going to be the quarterback there or not um, also plays into it. Having to play beside a fully healthy Justin Jefferson. So I don't know. I'm a little scared off by Hawkinson at the moment. Like, I definitely prefer Schultz. I think Cole Komet is interesting with Caleb Williams there. Um, but not too much later as long as he's going to be playing. How are you guys feeling about him? Yeah, I think, you know, you're you're looking at the late, you know, season for him. I think there's a very good chance he goes on the pup list. Uh, could miss the first six weeks. Oh, we got sniped. We did. What happened? We got sniped by the Stack Hunter Sniper. <laughs> for who? How aptly named. Ben oh Sinnott. <laughs> Is he a rookie? Yeah. yeah. He's a rookie. Theo loves him. We were going to draft him to appease Theo. Uh, (laughs) I I don't mind the first name on there. The second name, I think we could wait until the last round. Yeah, let's take Uh, uh, let's take him. All right, Joe Carlton only had two tight ends, not a snipe. LOL. It's always a snipe. (laughs) Don't give me that. Um, (laughs) Tell me about Ben Sinat. What do we what do we know about him? I know one guy had a crazy combine, like a ten point oh. Thing. Yeah, I think that was uh, your Theo Johnson out Theo of Johnson, uh, Penn, yeah. Yeah, Theo Johnson. Yeah, Theo Johnson out of Penn State. So yeah, Ben's seven. in it, four six eight forty seventy six percentile speed score, ninety eighth percentile burst, eighty uh, fifth percentile agility. Um, no, am I reading this right? Ninety eighth birth score, ninety five ninety fifth percentile agility. 96 catch radius. He's not even 22. Um, and, I mean, probably a day two pick. Yeah. Hoping to be the the fourth tight end off the board? Or maybe yeah, the second probably, or third? Yeah, he could, he could go anywhere in that range, I think. I like the player we have at number one here, Bradley. Oh, yes. The only healthy signed running back for the team at this point. Yes. Yes, let's go. The unsung hero of Baltimore, Justice Hill, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about him, but I didn't want to do it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> All right, so Joe Carlton is now definitely on my shit list with the, <laughs> with the, the Darnell Mooney snipe. How could like you, Joe? Too. How could you, Joe? Come on. Mm, that's, that's terrible. Phenomenal. I tweeted well him out of a couple days ago, and, and Joe goes out there and just steals it. Yeah, I, I, I like Mooney a lot just because of the fact that, I mean, you know, this is a guy who has, now granted, in a, a terrible situation, but he commanded 140 targets at one point. Uh, he, you know, he's had a couple bad years since, but I think there's more to Mooney than what the Bears have gotten out of him the past couple of years. I think if he goes to a good offense, uh, you know, he could he could be a great, great late round pick. And even if he goes to an offense that isn't that much better than the Bears, he could still be pretty decent. Yeah, Mooney's got speed, and he's proven that he's earned targets in the past. Um, he struggled to stay healthy, but you know, one of the, there were, there was debate like a couple years ago. Is he like a sixth round pick seventh round pick? You remember that time, Dan, where he was getting mm-hmm. steamed up. So, oh, high. Yeah. and I, I could not buy into him. I had zero shares of Darnell Mooney at that ADP and like, it was the right call, but it was driven from the fact that even when he had earned 140 targets, like he did nothing with them. Like he barely was able to get, you know, your, your top 15 top 24 weeks from those massive amount of targets. So, you know, unfortunately, whether it was the bears, maybe he does need a new setting. Maybe he's an, un, a sneaky signing that Kansas city or Buffalo can have as like a wide receiver three. 
Yeah, I, I mean, think that he would, is. That would definitely be the upside pick for sure if uh, he ends up there. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a definitely an interesting name at the at the end of drafts. You know, getting a guy like Darnell Mooney probably going to have improved quarterback play. <coughs> um, I mean, almost no. He's not going to be a bear again, right? He's a free no. agent, so yeah, he's a free do, agent. Do we have any any inkling where he could end up? No, no, I haven't seen any real. You, you don't want to be a titan, like that's like the ugh. or a panther. Although, I don't know. It's not the yeah, a panther way. would be bad too, probably. But yeah, I mean, you know, but you think about it, Mooney is kind of a sort of right now a second tier wide receiver free agent. I mean, you know, there's four or five guys. Clearly better than him, you know, Ridley and uh, um, Hollywood and, you know, there's a, there's a couple, th- there's probably like four or five guys that are clearly better than him, but then pretty quickly you get down to a point where it's like, okay, Mooney, yeah, he, he fits in that next group for sure and might even be up closer to the top of it. Yep, there we go. There's the Evan Hall pick. Ending it with Hall. Yes. I, I, I figured that was probably coming from our earlier discussion. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious, though, Liam, uh, you, you let Quint, Quentin Johnson pass a couple times. Was that was just because you were done at uh, wide receiver? Or I mean, it's, it's that. Totally and it's, out at him. It, and it's closer to out than in on him. I also... I don't care about the stack as much in something like this where I'm just trying to finish first over the course of a season versus a playoff format. And yeah, I mean, I think my team really needs running backs, right? Like a Chan, I feel good about, but the rest all have question marks in some way. Um, whether it's if they're playing at all, you know, like I don't know if Damian Pierce is going to be seeing the field. I don't know if Chris Rod- Rodriguez will. I don't know if and when Mitchell will come back. So I definitely like the upside of some of them, but yeah, a bunch of them have question marks. So just wanted the extra darts there. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, yeah, honestly, I mean, I think Pierce is a pretty nice start throw there. Yeah. 19th round. Why not? Yeah, I mean, what a weird season. To, To go from what he had the year before, like... It must be the Zach Moss thing, you know, just not a good fit for the blocking scheme that they changed it to. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. What are you guys thinking uh, for your last pick here? Well, well we got a few in the queue. Sniped. We keep getting sniped, so maybe <laughs> we'll want to give Joe a hint here. We do no, have I know, right? eight in the queue. Uh, here right. goes Cole Joe- Turner. He took somebody we we didn't have in there. All right, who do you like here? What do you think positionally? There's somebody, you know, should we be going wide receiver, running back, or tight end? What are you? What are we've your thoughts here, Bradley? Six. We've got six running backs. We got seven wide receivers. Uh, it is. Uh, we have three tight ends. I think we could use that tight end. Um, you know, that athletic, very athletic tight end. I also have like 50 percent exposure on underdog to Brendan Rice. Which is maybe a problem, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe Frank Gore Jr. is still there. Yeah, well, he's in the queue. Ooh. No doubt about it. So, what do you think? Theo? I'd probably lean Theo, but I mean, you know, given given uh, you know, we 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 both have to deal with Theo Griminger plenty. We know how to deal with Theos, so let's let's take Theo Johnson. Sounds good. Love it. All right. Cool beans. Well, there we go. Liam, uh, Liam, it's been an absolute pleasure having you join us for this uh, Thursday night FFPC draft. Yes, guys. Thanks so much for having me. It will be a pleasure watching my team uh, kick your team's ass here. (laughs) When when you guys are wondering why uh, Travis Kelsey only turns it on in the playoffs and I'm uh, cashing in those Jalen Hurts points. There we go. There we go. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, but this was was a lot of fun. Uh, Yeah, appreciate you you coming on. And, uh, you know, 
it, it was interesting to see where I think, you know, some of these rookies went. Like, we, we are already seeing since the combine, you know, rookies really start to rise up the, the draft boards a lot. Uh, you know, there was even two, three years ago, it used to be that, you know, like when, uh, when Miles Sanders came out, you know, here was a guy that you could, you know, you could get in the 19th round basically up until the NFL draft because still nobody was paying attention to him because it, he wasn't one of the, you know, like 12 or 15 rookies that all the dynasty guys were talking about. Now, you know, he, even though, you know, you have guys like uh, Jalen Wright, you know, that nobody was really talking about too much, um, you know, all of a sudden they're starting to shoot up draft boards. You know, like Jalen Wright would have been my, my comp kind of for Miles Sanders, uh, you know, a guy who I could have consistently got in the 18th, 19th, 20th round uh, for weeks. And, and, and those kind of edges just aren't there anymore. So it, I, I think it's fun to see where the, those rookies go. Um any last thoughts from uh, from you, Liam, on the the draft, how it went? Um, general thoughts at all? No, it's just fun to see all the different builds this time of year. Um, I try to take away a little bit from each draft, as you know, still it's still in my off season primarily, but just ramping up and excited for the actual draft to to occur, where things yes. really start to start to get real. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and free agency over the next couple of weeks is going to be wild. No doubt about it. I mean, you know. Call your shot. What's the biggest free agent move we see? It, it, it's got to be Kirk Cousins, whether he stays or whether he goes. I mean, <laughs> How I about think Calvin that, Ridley? Calvin Ridley will be a? Calvin Ridley? I'm, I'm going with the Jaguar. No, he – if – I. That's tough because he's going to cost a second-round pick. If, if but I is. think if they wait until free agency, he only costs a third. Oh, okay. Is that the case? So, I yeah, have I heard he... rumblings that Ridley does want to return to Jacksonville. I mean, and it makes Jack... sense. It's just it, if it costs a second, that's just like yeah, that would be tough. But I think that's row, third's not so bad. Yeah, I think that's only if they sign him before your free agency starts. Then he costs a second. But if they wait until free agency and then sign him, it's a third. Okay, that's not so bad. They'll pay that. Yeah, but I think so. if not, he's a Panther with all that money. Oh yeah, there you go. I like that. Maybe, uh, maybe he's a giant with the Giants cut Waller. Oh man, yeah. Speaking of Waller, he didn't. Did he even get drafted in this thing? Yeah, he did. I guess somebody. He did, but he. There's been rumblings that if he doesn't get cut, he'll retire. You know, there's. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, he's kind of talking a little bit more like a guy who's got you know more one foot out than one foot in. Yeah. If that makes sense. So. Absolutely. <clears throat> Wheeler asks, who's the rake? And uh, I think it was Team 11 whose wide receiver one is Dontavion Wicks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got a chance, but it's not not pretty. Yeah. It's not, it's not looking good. Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, uh, Gabe Davis, Demarcus Robinson, Andre Yoshiva. A.T. Perry and Malik Washington round out the wide receiver group. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess I'll go this far. If you're going to construct your team that way, um, it's not a terrible job of putting it together. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, I can't get there on the construction. No, not at all. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> so, I tried to be nice. I tried to be nice. <laughs> I, I, I don't love my construction always, but it is what it is. Um, you know, and like I'm avoiding landmines like this. You know, guys like Saquon could be great, could be a landmine. You know, mm. um, guys like TJ Hawkinson could be great, could be a landmine. <laughs> yep. Yeah, if Hawkinson avoids the PUP, which is unlikely but possible, I think that's a value, you know, in Hawkinson. Yeah, team team nine. I mean, I th I think they probably could have used a couple more wide receivers a little bit earlier, but otherwise, you know, like a, the Hawkinson pick, I think would have been better as a wide receiver. Um, but you know, this this is a guy that I I compete against in uh, dynasty. Um, and, and People are requesting to see the draft board as we. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'll pull it up. Find out here. Yes. 
So anyway, but uh, he's a, yeah, he's a he's a sharp dynasty player, and uh, he's he's quite active in the best ball streets too, and does pretty well there. So um, I'm I'm always interested to see what he does, and I think JD has a you know, a, I like how um, how Harry Snowman put. It. I think JD is a sneak in the rake. Um, <laughs> it's you know, but that's kind of where you want to be in best ball, you know. There's there's no value in finishing six. Yeah, his so. first quarterback was Justin Fields, and then yeah, I, that that that's probably the that's probably the biggest net I have to pick with that team is just the Justin Fields early early pick, and then just Baker Mayfield and uh, Penix after that. But yeah. otherwise, I mean, you know, it's a it's a well put together team. Yeah, not every player is my favorite, but right. Who knows? Exactly. I mean, you know, that's the thing. I mean, you know, when it comes down to player tra- player takes, you know, it's it's the hardest you know, thing. <laughs> yeah, the most any, important any, thing. Any but, strategy yeah. works if you pick the right players, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Uh, any final thoughts, Liam? We should probably let you get out of here. We've already been on for a buck thirty-one. So uh, no, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, this thanks, was a lot Liam. of fun. We appreciate it. All right, everyone. On behalf of Liam and Dan, I'm Bradley. Until next time, good luck in the best ball streets. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in. It's important to me that all of our media be free. This is only possible because of you allowing a true independent sports media enterprise to thrive unlike any other in the business. So please subscribe to the All In Package to continue to make all this possible to ensure that all of our stats, information, data, content is available to you, especially you, the people that get the site and get the show.